In today's video, I'm going to research this studio image from scratch to finish and also I'll be going in depth into researching whereby I'll be explaining my thought process on how to achieve a very aesthetic look. If you are new here, my name is Tengita. Okay, to start with this process, what I'll first do is to create a new layer. I will basically use this layer to do the skin prep and you know, the skin prep is just like you are painting a wall. So you know, before you start painting, you need to sweep everywhere, you need to clear everywhere to make sure that the wall is clean. Assuming you are using a white paint, you need to clear the wall first in order for you to start applying the paint so that you will not have a dirty work. So the same thing applies here. I will do the skin prep so that I will make sure that everything is clean as possible. And this method will allow me to achieve a very clean image. All right, let me start with that. First of all, I will create a new layer. And I said to create a new layer, you can do that by clicking on Command or Control G on the keyboard. On this layer, I will use it to remove anything I feel is not okay for me. Okay, I'll start by clicking on my patch tool here and I'll use my patch tool to remove anything I feel is not okay for me. Where I think the patch tool will not work, I can switch that by using spot cleaning brush, which is this one over here. And I'm done with this one. I can spot a thread under her elbow. I will remove that as well. Okay, I've removed that. I will check again and see if there is anything that I need to get rid of. I will just remove that as well. You can see there's a powder around her chest here. I'll remove that. I think this may be a result for maybe when they were doing the makeup so something spilled on her shirt. Okay, I'll just clean everything. So my aim is just to make the picture as clean as possible. On the face, I can spot some little blemishes although she has a very good skin but still yet there are some little blemishes on the face so I'll just remove that with my spot healing brush. Very easy and straightforward. Okay guys, if you are finding this video helpful, please do give it a like because this really helps the channel. Alright, let's continue. So I'll not do too much because there's not too much blemishes on our face. So I think we are good. Let me just remove the ones I can see that are obvious. Okay guys, if you are wondering what I use for my color grading and color creating, I use Capture One because these days I usually stick with Capture One. I don't use Lightroom and Capture One is my go-to when it comes to color grading and color correction. If you like me to do a video on Capture One, so you can drop a comment in the comment section down below. And also, I have a free Capture One style on my digital store. You can check that link in the description down below. So you can accept that and you can get one for yourself and apply for your images. I'm done with removing the blemishes I can see that are obvious. Then the next thing I'll do is I'll start with my frequency separation. And with my frequency separation, I have two frequency separation. I have the 8 bit and I have the 16 bit. So for the 8 bit, what I'll use it for, I'll use it for the first frequency separation I'll do. And for the 16, I'll just use it to blend some parts I think are not well balanced. So for this one, I'll click on 8 bit. And it's obvious you can see a window that appears just now. And the window says Gaussian block. So we have a radius underneath it. So this radius, the way it works is this. If an image is a full body shot, you can stick with the radius of 2, 3 to 4. If an image is the kind of a medium shot like this one, you can see is the medium shot tight portrait. There is a medium portrait. So you can stick with 6, 7 to 8. Then if your picture is a kind of a very close up, like your very tight shots, so you can stick with radius of let's like, say 10, 11, 12 upwards. For this one, I'll just stick with 7 and I'll click on OK. And we have the frequency separation layers here. We have the high frequency which contains the texture. We have the correcting tone. We have the low frequency which contains the colors and tones. For the correcting tones, I don't use it. I basically stick with the low frequency. Then I will close the eyes. Anyone that knows me knows that this is my own style of researching. I will close my high layer so that I can see what I'm basically working on. And again, some people usually stick with this style whereby they will be using the black and white, but I don't like that. I prefer normal closing of eye. So that will allow me to see where I need to retouch. So I'll zoom in, not too much, and I'll start re retouching. Let me bring the eyes back so you can see something. So when it comes to this retouching and FS in general, there's something here that you need to know. There's some logic that we usually apply here. We have the, the highlights, we have shadow, and we have main twins. So when it comes to the frequency separation, we are just mixing. We we'll brush highlight, we we'll brush shadow. Then in between, there will be a transition. They will just blend it in between. And again, we have the mixer brush, which is the tool we use for the mixing. 
and for the settings i use here i stick with clean brush here and i have i use clean brush i make sure that this icon is checked i make sure that wave is 13 load is 13 mix 30 and flow 30. then i'll just close my high layer and i'll start the retouching where you want to retouch like for instance this is the shadow area and this is the highlight area so let me start with the highlight uh, shadow area if i brush like this and i'll brush the highlights then in between it there will be a transition then i'll just blend it like that okay let me just continue and i'll follow my own process of research in which i'll close the eyes here And if you follow this technique that I just showed you guys, so you can achieve a very natural look picture. Instead of a picture being too smooth, yes, you achieve a very natural look. Okay, guys, I'm done with my first prevent separation, which is this 8 bit. This is the before and this is the after. We've done something. So from here, I'll start with my second frequency separation and I'll use that to blend the image more. So I'll create a stamp visible layer. I forgot to explain the stamp visible layer. So stamp visible layer is a layer that comprises of the previous work you did so it will combine everything together for you so that even though in the future of every while in the fortune you made a mistake you can easily delete a particular layer or you can come back easily instead of you deleting everything for and starting from scratch so to create the same visible layer you can simply do that by clicking on command or control shift alt e on the keyboard okay i've created it then i'll click on my frequency separation 16 bit so i'll still give it the same radius i gave the first one i'll click on okay and then I'll click on low frequency and I will close the eye as always. So I'll just search again. Okay, guys, if you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like because it really helps the channel. Okay, guys, I'm done with my second frequency separation. I will remove some blemishes that I can see that are obvious again. So I will just get rid of them one after the other. I'm using 16 bits and a high frequency. And again, on my digital store, I have a free lot for you guys. You can check that out. Link in the description down below. Okay, guys, if you are finding this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I posted any of my future video because I have a lot of tutorials coming on on this channel. You can't afford to miss that. Okay, this is a before and this is after. Before and after. Okay guys, from here, what I'll do is I'll play my eyes on teeth whitening. I'll just enhance our eyes. So I'm done with removing the blemishes. Then I'll click on my action panel and click on white eyes and teeth. So this white eyes and teeth, I'll just use it to enhance our eyes. And in this case, I'll be using the normal brush, which is this one over here. And I'll zoom in a bit so that I can see the eyes well. Make sure your opacity is 100, your flow is 100 and foreground is white. Then you start brushing. On the layer obesity, I'll reduce it to 40. So from this stage, I will delve into the color grading aspect, which is the fun part. And I will create another stamp visible layer. I've done that. Then I will click on my adjustments here. I will click on color lookup. I will click on load 3D lot. Then with the load 3D lot, I have a lot, a studio lot that I use for all my images. So it's what I use to Collaborate all my images and again this studio lot is on my digital store as well you can check that and you can use it for your images you can twist it to suit your own style of photography and it's very very nice to be honest let me play it for you guys so that you can see now like this is too much so i'll reduce it down to like let's say 20 so i'll bring it back to like 20 and 20 is okay for me then I will click on the adjustments again and I will click on levels. I will add levels like 4 and yes, like this, 2, 5, 1 and 4. Then from this, I will click on my brightness. I will increase my brightness a bit. 
and I'll add contrast. As you can see, for me, the image is too reddish for my liking. Then I will go back to my adjustment again and I will reduce the saturation down to like seven, minus seven, sorry, minus seven. Yes, it's still not okay for me. I'll take it down to like minus eight. I think minus eight is okay for me. I can increase the brightness more. So I think I'm good. And this is the image guys. So let me just reduce the saturation to like minus 11. So this is what I want. You can decide to leave it at that zero. It all boils down to what you want to achieve and what you like. But for me, this is what I like and this is my old style. Okay. Then the next thing I'll do is I'll create another sun visible layer. So now this time visible layer, I'll use it to add sharpness to my subject. And to do that, I'll click on filter and I'll click on sharpen, smart sharpen. Then I'll click on OK. OK, I've done that. So I've added a bit of sharpness to my subject. This is it, guys. And and I think I'm OK with this image. I'm done with touching this image and color grading. OK, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe, and keep the bell icon to get notified whenever I posted any of my future video. And you can see we didn't do that much to this image. We just followed the simple process in order to achieve a very aesthetic look. If you follow this process and if you watch this video back to back again, I believe you learn this thing and it will really help you in your photography. So guys, thank you so much and see you guys in the next one. Peace.